Race number five at Ascot on Saturday. We'll jump at 3.14. It's the Miss Andretti Stakes. Listed race over the 1,100 metres named after Miss Andretti, who won this race back in 2005 when it was called the Ruabon Stakes. In replay, we're going to go and have a look at the run of Valor Road in the AJ Scahill. 350 flow led by a length and a half on Valor Road. They're two clear from Abdicator. Profit Street, the Celt Flirtini being called upon with 150 to run. Valor Road hit the front. Here comes the Celt though with a run. Look at the Celt flying. It's the Celt ranging up, grabbing Valor Road. The Celt wins it. The Celt got the. Not much has gone right for Valor Road. This preparation was fourth in the Prince of Wales Stakes, then had a trial before the winter bottom, only beat a couple home, and then was second in the AJ scale. That was over the 1,400 metres, beaten by the Celt. Back to the 1,100 metres here. I think this horse is more of an 1,100 metre horse than a 1,400 metre horse. Reunites with William Pike as well. They've uh, combined for victory before. Gate number three, I think it's going to take a stack of beating, goes on top. From number four, Belter, who gets gate number one, will be on speed all the way. Trailed at Fabergino last start, but plugged on to finish second, beaten three and three quarter lengths in what was a very high rating race. Belter is going to be in it for a very, very long way. Number three is Profit Street, who ran really well in that summer scorcher, beaten five and a bit lengths behind Fabergino. Was finishing off very, very strongly. Goes from the 1,000 up to the 1,100 metres, was okay in the scale hill behind. The Celt. I think 1200 metres is probably the best trip for Profit Street, but going really well. And then number five, don't fuss. Joe Azapati and Daniel and Ben Pierce comes out of a ratings race beaten by undisclosed two and a bit lengths here, but uh, goes in the mind as ahead of the Celt. I'm not really sure about from a thousand back up to 1100 metres. He won the scale that we saw in replay over the seven furlongs. Top selection in race number five is two Valor Road to beat four Belter three Profit Street and five Don't Fuss. Race number six at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 3.50. It's the David Della Rocca handicap over 2,100 metres. In replay, let's go back a fortnight to the win of Mackenzie Brook. Let's focus on Alimentaria. Kick two clear. High energy freedom by choice. The Black Watch towards the inside. Cutting the corner. Stafford's lad. Then Mackenzie Brook further back. Centre middle. Gift running on with Alimentaria. Stafford's lad shot up on the inside. Alimentaria. Mackenzie Brook go to it though. And centre middle. Gift charging. Mackenzie Brook. Centre middle. Gift. Mackenzie Brook. Mackenzie. I think that race is the key form line here. Mackenzie Brook got the job done that day. But uh, Alimentaria gets William Pike on Saturday. He takes over from Chris Graham. I know he's a three kilo claimer, but I think that uh, William Pike is worth more than the three kilos. Prior to that, Alimentaria had won three in the provinces, one at uh, Narragin and two at Pinjarra. I think this horse could improve out of sight for the champion jockey and goes on top. From the aforementioned two, Mackenzie Brook has now won two in a row, Bunbury and then Ascot. It was a good win on that day and uh, certainly a stayer with a bit of potential. Has won from four from 11 and well related as well is a, a relation of Tinsnip who won the size produce stakes. Number six is Morning Song. Chris Graham rides his horse. He takes over from William Pike. The query has to be the gate here. Gate number 13 of 13. Comes out of the graduation race where it beat Barra Magic. I think the form's okay, but I really do wonder as where Morning Song's going to get to in the race. And number eight, the Cat Ratchet for David Harrison and Clint Johnston Porter. Won a class one off a very long break. Uh, two starts to go. Wasn't too bad behind the Morning Song. Goes in the minus here, but I think probably not quite the re reference we're looking for. Top selection in race number six is number three, Alimentaria to beat two Mackenzie Brook, six Morning Song and eight the Cat Ratcher. Race number seven at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 4.20. It's the Terence Brown 80th birthday handicap over 1,400 metres in replay. Let's have a look at the last start win of coming around. Straight there being followed further back by Universal May, Mankind. Choice command at the 250. Pike looking to extricate, coming around off his heels and he now navigates around the outside of the leader and coming around, put pay to it, coming around, races away from Choice Command. His Mankind on the scene late, but too good for them coming around. No doubt whatsoever in my mind that coming around is the best horse 
in race number seven on Saturday. The gate is the query, I suppose. Gate number 11 of 12. But it probably means we're going to get a price here about this horse who's having a really good first campaign with Grant and Alana Williams. Always showed some ability for Raquel Williams. Was very good first up behind this or test down. I know he's beaten seven and three quarter lengths, but that was an unsuitable race. And then got the job done very easily last start at $1.80, beating Choice Command. I think coming around is going to go through the grades. Goes from a 66 plus to another 66 plus here. Goes up in weight, but with Pike aboard, I think coming around can win. Goes on top from number five, Dicoletto. Doesn't win out of turn this horse, but he'll certainly be on speed for Jared Noski, who takes over from Chris Graham. Jared rode this horse five starts ago in a class five here at Ascot on Melbourne Cup Day. Was beaten a length that day. Can be in it for a long, long way, you would think. Number eight is Why Choose Her for Ash Maley and Sean McGruddy. Jay McNaught suspended, so Sean McGruddy picks up the ride here. And then number two, Juicing Carriage resumes for Raquel Reed and Craig Staples. Actually placed fresh over this trip last campaign, so don't rule it out running a decent race, although you probably think that Juicing Carriage wants at least 1,800 metres later on in its preparation. Top selection in race number seven is number three, coming around to beat five Dicoletto, eight Why Choose Her and two Juicing Carrots. Race number eight at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 4.50. It's the C Corp Handicap over 1,000 metres in replay. Let's go back to the summer scorcher and zero in on Essential Spice. Back on the inside, but now Nucky works her through a gears and Fabagino shot away by four lengths to Belter and Essential Spice. He had a sustained look over the right shoulder on the Liverpool Grey. She's well clear past the 100. It's Fabagino racing away with the summer scorcher. Another dynamic victory. She won it by three and a half. Four of the ten runners come out of the Summer Scorcher and it is clearly the best form reference. The win by Fabagino was absolutely outstanding and Essential Spice was beaten less than four lengths. Prior to that one, a 72 plus race beaten undisclosed. That's good form for this as well in this grade. I think it's a good use of the claim here. Chris Graham rode the horse two starts ago to win. Brings the weight down to 58 kilos. I think Essential Spice will be there or thereabouts in the run and she will take a stack of beating. Goes on top from number two, Saracino, who gets gate number one and a claimer in Harry Grace. This horse has been ridden by claimers before but not since uh, August when Fred Kersley rode it when he came back to WA from Victoria. Was five and a bit lengths behind Fabagino in the summer scorcher. Hasn't won out of turn in fact. Has only won the three out of 32 and it's been a long time since Saracino saluted the judge but uh, can certainly run in the minors here. Number three is Undisclosed. Now Undisclosed his ratings are on the wane somewhat but uh, certainly no longer a first up specialist. Has been running really really well. I think they go reasonably quick here. Gate number nine, not the end of the world for a horse that gets back, can certainly figure in the finish. And then number seven, Plutocracy, probably should have won last start, the last race on uh, Perth Cup Day, was beaten just a little bit by speeding comment, but gets gate number 10 here, and uh, I can't see it beating Essential Spice, there's too much of a gap I think in their ability level in spite of the weight. Top selection in race number eight is number one, Essential Spice, to beat two Saracino, three Undisclosed, and seven Plutocracy. Race number nine at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 5.25. It's the Crown Sports Bar Handicap over 1,000 metres in replay. Let's have a look at the last start performance of Tycoon Legend. Clear with State Attorney down on the inside. Lace Vinsky in behind them, trying to find a bit of room with to rise again. And then Abby Lane, Sterling Estate, State Attorney. State Attorney gets right up on the inside to grab Sterling Estate with Abby Lane running on. But State Attorney hugging the Dulux too good. Another brilliant ride by Pike. Came away State Attorney to win first. Frankly, impossible race to finish the day here. It's going to be each way odds the field, one would suspect. Tycoon Legend goes on top. Was held up until about 100 metres from home last start. That is Tycoon Legend's pattern. Did win two starts ago, beating Namillion. We'll need some looking running from gate number nine with Clint Johnson Porter aboard, but I think Tycoon Legend's best is every bit as good as every other horse in this race, and therefore goes on top. From number one, Transgressor, a horse that's won six of its 50 starts, did win at Ascot uh, last time out, but that was a while ago now, 44 days. Blinkers on, visor off. Chris Graham, he claims he rode the horse last start. Uh, certainly can run a race, and there's no reason why Transgressor can't win again. Number 12 is Sterling Estate. Simply does not win out a turn, but he's probably better than a graduation race. He's been running well in all sorts of races, 66 plus, his graduation class fives. He'll be there or thereabouts for a long way, but it generally finds one too good. And then number eight, Imperial Venus. Interesting runner this. Uh, same owners as before, but now with Grant and Alana Williams 
Gate number one, William Pike rides. Both the trials have been pretty good. This horse gets back, or has got back in the past. It'll be interesting to see what they do here with this horse that was previously with Gavin Foster. Top selection in race number nine is number nine, Tycoon Legend, to beat one Transgressor, 12 Sterling Estate, and eight Imperial Venus. It's now time to nominate my best bets on the Ascot card. He hasn't got a full book of rides, William Pike, but I think he might win the first four times he goes to the start. And my best bets are two of Pikey's rides. Race number five, number two, Valor Road. And in race number seven, number three, coming around. It's easy to stay up to date with everything that's happening at Perth Racing. You can log on to our website or you can follow us on one of our social media channels. Until next time, bye for now.